Hey guys, what is up and welcome to a new League of Legends video. So there have been a lot of changes coming into League of Legends very recently, but one of the biggest changes that has recently hit League of Legends is definitely the Fiora rework. Now I'm sure a lot of you are trying to play out this new Fiora, get a feel for her, try to understand how exactly she works and how you should play her. Well, I made this video after playing a lot of Fiora games to try and help you guys out on that and give you a better idea of how you should be playing this new Fiora, what items you should get, general tips, and all that good stuff. So my goal at the end of this video is to try and teach you something new or cool about the new Fiora update, and hopefully with that knowledge, you can improve your own gameplay with this champion. So I want to start this video off a little differently than I usually do, and I want to start talking about general tips with the new Fiora that I personally have figured out while playing her. So the first one is actually really important. Now, in the laning phase, whether it's mid or top lane, a lot of your trade potential comes from combining your Q ability and your passive. While well, your passive, if you didn't know, does have four different areas they can apply to on the enemy champion being north, south, west, and east. And naturally, depending on what side you're on, you want two of the four passives being applied to your champion because those are the easier ones to activate with your Q. So if the passive appears on your target away from you or not on the side that you can easily proc it with your Q, a little trick is to run away from your target enough distance so that your passive actually goes off of them and then it'll automatically reset and apply a new one when you go back within range rather than standing there and waiting for it to simply diminish and then apply once more which takes much longer. At level 1 once the laning phase starts if your passive is applied on the good side like you see here on the Azir you can actually go very aggressive with your Q and probably win the trade. But if not you can usually wait till level 2 or especially level 3 and you can easily go in with the Q, proc the passive, auto attack, use the W to absorb any damage and then retreat. Or as you're about to see with the TF example, you use the Q proc the passive, proc the E ability as well both times if possible, and then react with a W to absorb any retaliation and go in for the kill or retreat and then repeat. And a very important thing, especially if you go for the Hydra item or Tiamat, is that she has a lot of auto attack reset potential with her abilities and of course the item as well, as you saw me do on the jungle camp right there. So let's take a look at that once more as I slow it down. So there's various ways to do it, but in this example what I do is I initiate with the Q, auto attack, and then Hydra for the reset, and then once the Hydra's finished, I proc the E and then let it auto attack both times, and then the Q again. But a better way I found out, which you see in the brackets there, is to use the Q, auto attack, E for the first slow, proc the Hydra and then E again after the Hydra for the second part of the E ability for the crit. Because applying the slow from the first E sooner rather than later could be more beneficial so your target doesn't run away. Another really cool thing is that if you land your W on the target while also hitting a vital point, it'll actually proc that vital point. Don't forget to use the E to auto attack the towers faster but I don't think you can crit the towers anymore with the second E ability like you could before on the PBE server. But I could be wrong. Your W is just an amazing ability flat out being able to block virtually virtually anything in any form of damage. For instance, in the Z clip, as we go for a huge 1v1 battle, he of course applies his death mark, but I time my W to absorb the damage that death mark deals, and virtually taking no damage from his ultimate itself. And last but not least, using your ultimate on a dying target just to proc the heal for your team within a team fight can be much more beneficial than using it on a target that's full HP and trying to deal more damage to them. So those are the general tips that I have so far come up with while playing several games of Fiora. Next, let's go into the pros and cons of playing Fiora mainly in the mid lane and maybe even top lane. So what are the positives of this new Fiora? Well, she first has good quick harass with her Q and her passive combined and it gives you a nice little HP sustain in the laning phase. I have also found the mana costs of her abilities to not really be too much of a problem, especially if you start bottle. Her Q, though being somewhat short range, can still go over many of the walls within Summoner's Rift, which can be definitely good for chasing and or escaping. Probably the biggest and most important thing about this new Fiora is the fact that her W can like I said earlier, virtually block almost anything within League of Legends, whether it's an ultimate, a CC ability, or just something like a Jinx rocket. And the proper execution of this ability is going to be absolutely vital in terms of whether or not you'll be successful with this new Fiora, and really just separating the bad, the okay, and the amazing Fioras. Also, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of auto attack reset potential with this Fiora. Even if you don't have the Tiamat or Hydra, you still have her Q and her E ability, but if you do have Tiamat or Hydra, that's just one whole extra reset that you can do. Her passive of course not only giving you the HP deals true damage which is pretty damn sweet whenever trying to kill a tank, her ultimate instantly gives you 4 passives that you can proc dealing a huge amount of damage while also getting a lot of HP back especially if you actually kill the target or proc all 4 passives getting the huge kind of healing fountain underneath the champion that you just killed. Which can also heal your team which is pretty important. So Fiora being a duelist obviously has very high dueling power so you want to make use of that again especially taking into account her ultimate 
ultimate and just how much potential it really does give you. She excels in long fights, being able to constantly reapply her passive with her Q ability, waiting for the cooldowns and being able to dodge more abilities, while also if you proc all four passives from your ultimate, having that healing fountain will also make you win sustained fights even that much more. The cons however of the new Fiora is that she's still lacking really good CC type abilities, especially in an AoE type fashion like something a Riven has with her W and the third Q. And a lot of the times if you're playing against people that know what they're doing, they probably won't let you have the stun ability from your W just to slow, which can also be a problem to really lock down your target. She doesn't really have the burst and her damage does feel a little lackluster compared to someone again like a Riven who's very similar in concept and purpose. And Riven can also fight quite well in sustained fights, I mean so can Fiora, but again the Riven does have the burst while Fiora seems to sort of lack that. But she does kind of make up with the fact that she can heal her whole team more than a Janna ultimate can. She's also somewhat reliant on Ashley being able to proc your passive whether it is from your passive itself or from the one that you activate with your ultimate. Even though this sounds weird, I still find it a little difficult to stick onto your target that has a lot of flashes and or dashes. I mean yeah you can slow them and yeah you have increased move speed, but you don't have anything to really get onto them instantly if they keep flashing or dashing away, like maybe an Ezreal. Which is why sometimes I like to build the Blade of the Rune King to help you with that. And proccing all four passes from her ultimate can be very tedious. Next, let's talk about what items you want to be building, and the first one I'll talk about is probably going to be the more common build you'll see most Fioras get. So either way, you want to start with either a Crystalline Flask or a Longsword and Potions, and it depends on who you're facing. If you think you'll be dueling a lot against a melee type champion like maybe a Yasuo, go for the Longsword. If you feel like you'll be against someone like a Lux or a Zir that'll be out poking you and be just overall annoying, get the Flask. Either way, for this build, you want to get the Hydra first, pretty much any type of boots that you want that you think fit the situation, and then get either a Triforce or a Black Cleaver, and then a Bloodthirster for the extra lifesteal, following it up with anything in the other options, probably maybe a Last Wisp, for maybe a Blade of the Rune King to help you stick on your target or a defensive item. I personally prefer this build if I'm facing someone with a lot of wave clear mid lane, so like a Lux or a Victor. Since Fiora doesn't have any wave clear built into her kit, the Hydra helps you match the potential that the Victor or the Lux have whenever it comes to pushing a lane in. And this one works quite well in a team fight as well. But here's another build I'm personally liking, which is more of the assassin type approach, getting the Blade of the Rune King and the Yomus for the CDR and just overall the dueling potential. This is a good one if you feel like you'll be dueling your opponent quite often, maybe like a Yasuo or just throughout the game in general, maybe split pushing as well. And overall it's just the kind of build I personally enjoy playing because it fits my type of playstyle more. The cool thing about this build is you still build the Hydra, it is just much later into the build, kind of when you'll actually need it, since again if you're facing a Zed or Yasuo, we don't really have the best kind of wave pushing potential like an Azir or someone like a Victor, you can duel them much more often. By the way for both of these builds, if you opt out for the Triforce, then you have to get the last Whisper almost always, however if you go for the Black Cleaver instead, then sometimes you can actually pass up on the last Whisper. Next you have my runes and my masteries, which should be self-explanatory so I'm not gonna go too much into them. Here's a very quick explanation as to how I level my abilities and it all really depends on what I'm facing. Again, you want to have the QW at level 2 for the cheese, but you almost always want to max Q first. You want to max E second if you want more damage or you want to max W second if you feel like you want to have more utility and if you're against someone that's casting a lot of big spells. But the final rating I'll be giving to Fiora is going to be a solid 7.5 out of 10. I think she's a very solid mid laner, being able to do quite a lot and has a very solid potential like you see here with the Azir ultimate being able to block so many things that mid laners can bring with spells, a really surprisingly good heal for her team, great dueling potential and overall just a solid laning phase if you play correctly with the Q passive harass, however she has no wave clear again unless you get the hydro and even then it's in melee form, extremely tedious to proc all 4 passives from her ultimate and again she is somewhat reliant to actually be able to proc the passives, and messing up your W could easily mean your death, so she's very reliant that you get a very good W off as well. But other than that guys that is about it for this video hopefully teaching you more tricks on how to play this new Fiora and hopefully you have actually learned something new. If you did enjoy it guys if you did learn something new please do throw in a like for this video subscribe if you haven't share it with your friends check out my other videos as well and I really hope to see you for the next video. Peace.